Today is December the 1st, 2015. My name is Tanya Fincham, along with Alex Bishop. We're with Oklahoma State University, and today we are in Edmond, Oklahoma, to speak with Ivan Martin, and this is part of our Oklahoma 100 Year Life Project, so thank you for having us. You're welcome. Let's begin by having you tell us when and where you were born. I was born in Rural, New Mexico, July the 27th, 1915. And do you have brothers and sisters? I had uh, two brothers and one sister. And where are you in the mix? I'm the next to the lowest one. I'm the next to the youngest one. Next to the youngest. Yeah. And what did your parents do for a living? My dad was a farmer. And my mother stayed at home. Why did he farm? Well, f first he started out in uh, 160 acres in New Mexico, out in the sand hills and plum thickets. <laughs> then we moved to Wichita in 1926, and there he went to work for the stockyards company. Doing what type of things? Well, janitor. Janitor. And did your mother still stay at home at that point? Yeah. Where did you go to elementary school? Where? Where? In Wichita. That's the reason my folks moved to Wichita to get those kids in school. In New Mexico, eighth grade was as long as you go. Okay. So for the first through the eighth, you went in New Mexico or Wichita? Wichita. Do you remember the name of the school? Skinner. Skinner. <laughs> and then after the eighth grade, what did you do? Eighth grade. Oh no, we went to Clarence School in Wichita. Yeah. After the eighth grade, though, we went oh, to North High. North High. Did you have a favorite subject? Woodworking. They don't have that anymore no. in schools. Hmm. Did you make something you of a particular interest? Interest? Well, not really. I made uh, a couple of cedar chests and uh, a bedstead. Turned it out on the lathe. My daughter's got them. Pam, you got one? No, there's one there in the closet. You've got all three? Yeah. That's unusual too. And they're still together? Yeah. Because you did it right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after you finished high school, what did you do? I went to work for the stockyards as a bookkeeper. Stockyards? The stockyards there in Wichita. And then I got up to the assistant to the secretary and treasurer, and I quit and went to work for myself. <laughs> Doing what? Vending machines, music boxes, jute boxes, and stuff. To to restaurants or any place I could put them. Restaurants and beer drawers, mainly. And did you do that the rest of your career? Yeah, I moved to Winfield in 1955. Bought out a route down there and. Moved my family all down there. We thought there's better schools down there and the kids could go and do as they please more because it's a nice little town. Getting a little closer to Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> did the company have a, uh, did you name the company or did it already have a name? I named it. What was it? Automatic Coin Machine. Is it still in business? Did you? Yeah, I sold it to one of the boys who's working for me mm -hmm. and he's still running it. So you spent a lot of time on the road? Quite a bit, but I was home every night. Drove a pickup truck? Pickup truck, two vans, and a big truck. And how many children did you have? Three. Three. Three girls. No boys. No boys. And a female <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was her name? <laughs> Babe. That's her right up there. Oh, pointer. Honey mm -hmm. dog. She's pretty. I had the picture made for me mm -hmm. from my photograph. Well, did you hunt or did you just have the dog? Oh, I hunted. I hunted and fished, played golf. What was your handicap? Seven. Went for a long time. I won a few tournaments. Get any holes in one? One. I played the big courses and you don't get too many holes in one. Mm -hmm. But you can claim one. Yep. 
Would the girls go golf with you? The girls? Uh -huh. no. Would they? None of them picked up the game? They tried. Well, Pam plays a little bit. No. <laughs> Well, when you were back in, in Wichita with your parents, when they moved off of the farm, did you have chores? Yeah, you... we raised chickens. Had laying the chickens and young chickens every year. Then we would dress them out and sell them as fries. Would you have to do the killing or did your mother or dad? I did. You did? And my brother cleaned out the chicken yard house. <laughs> Has a certain smell, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> milk cows? Me never. Mm -hmm. My dad did milk them. We lived on 21st Street. I built a new house out there in 1941. And uh, we had milk cows. Dad did the milk and I did the feeding and the cleaning. Mm -hmm. 1941, that was about the time the war was gearing up? Yep. Did you have to go? No. I worked for the stockyards at that time, and uh, my boss was on a, the board. And if I'd get a 1A, he'd have me in the next, next two or three days, I'd get a letter as 4A, 4F. He ordered me on that job. Oh, well, you helped on the home front. Yep. Did your brothers have to go? My little brother did, Moore's brother. Was not able to do it. Mm -hmm. Little brother, he went to uh, just a regular army, but he was in South Dakota and out in San Diego, and out in the desert. I don't think he ever went overseas. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when the when they declared the war over? No. Nope. Okay. Was he home by then? Probably not. No, he was in South Dakota, I believe, at that time. Well, how were holidays when you were growing up, like Christmas and Thanksgiving? They were all right. Would you get presents at Christmas? Uh, we got fruit. Fruit? Well, when we lived in New Mexico. You get an orange and an apple, maybe. And be happy to get it. Yeah. that's You didn't get much fruit out there. About the old fruits you had out there were sand plums. We used to go pick a bunch of them every year and make toe jam out of them. Toe jam? Mm -hmm. We call it that. It was jam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming your mother had a good, a good garden, too. A what? A garden? No, we didn't no. have a garden. Which was a garden at all. Too dry. It was sand plums and cactus. That all it was out there. Well, what did he try to grow on his 160 acres there? Well, we grew corn, maize, and a uh, few peanuts. Hmm. Mostly pasture. And did you have to do some chores there? Oh, no, I was too little. You're too little? I moved, we moved from there when I was six years old. Okay, pretty good. Too young then. How did you get from New Mexico to Kansas? in the back end of a railroad car with her furniture in the front. Hmm. They went to Hutchison, Kansas and took the inner urban down to Wichita from Hutchison. You know what an inner urban was? It's electric streetcar. Hmm. An electric streetcar. Well, how long did that take? I don't remember. A day or two or not that oh, long? Oh, no, no. It was only about 50, 60 miles. Oh. Then we rode a hay rack from there out to my where we were going to live. And a hay rack yeah. is? Some people won't know what, what is a hay rack. That's a regular wagon with big sides on it so you throw the hay in it and haul it. And it pulled by? Horses. A, it's, horses, okay. That's all we had was horses. No tractors at that time, hardly. Hmm. Well, did you ride horses for fun or were they for oh, work? Well, uh, when we was, my wife and I lived out on 21st Street, we had 20 acres. We had three riding horses out there. 
Always had something for fun. Yeah. Well, did you go to dances? No. Well, yes, we went to shrine dances. I couldn't dance for the darn. <laughs> my wife was a good dancer. Well, did you like music? Did you play any instrument? No, I never did. Just played the jukeboxes. <laughs> well, did she? Did your wife play she piano? She played the piano and the organ. And she was a good musician. So she had all the rhythm? Yep, she did. That's why she liked to dance. <laughs> Well, how'd you meet your wife? Moved across the street from her when I was six years old. She was the only one I ever dated. From age six? What uh, was her name? Doris. And her, her maiden name? Nichols. Nichols. Doris Virginia Nichols. And when did you get married? In 1934. During the Depression? We was nine years old, 19 years old. Yeah, right in the middle of the Depression. Mm -hmm. I was making 10 cents an hour. Doing what? Working as a bookkeeper at Scotiards. Just 10 cents an hour? <laughs> I hired a lot of university boys and graduated out of university at 10 cents an hour to dig post holes at Scotiards. And there'd be 200 men out there in front waiting to get a job. Oh, you couldn't get a job for nothing. Hmm. And that was in Wichita? Yeah. In the 30s? Mm -hmm. hmm. So you were lucky to get your bookkeeping job? Yep. Well, I went from uh, as a timekeeper for the laborers out, and from there into the office, main office, is a just office boy for a while. Then I got up to where I was keeping books and sending messages on the poster and uh, Western Union. It's hard to turn away people if there's that many lined up for a job. Just one of those things. Just one of those things. You just. And my boss I worked for was quite an old man. He was a gentleman. And I said, why don't you get a diggers out there to dig that instead of these men with pick and shovels? He said, they need to work. But the ground was so hard and dry, it'd take them a day to dig one hole. It was pitiful. And you were 19 when you got married? Yeah. Did you elope? No. No? Got married in my mother, mother-in-law's house by a quick, uh, yeah, a quicker man, preacher. Cost me five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go on a honeymoon? No. Couldn't afford it? Couldn't afford it. And did you go into... Did, your own apartment, or at that point, or did you live with well, one I, set of parents? I lived with my oldest brother and his wife. Mm -hmm. We lived there for a few months and then got in a garage apartment. Mm -hmm. Then I bought a house in 35. How much did you pay for it? $1,750, and then I paid on it for a couple of years, and, and they dropped it to 1250 then. Price of the house was really when it come out it was twelve hundred and fifty dollars, five hundred more. And then when you sold it, for forty one hundred. Oh. In nineteen forty one, we moved out on this twenty acres and built a new five room house. Doing pretty good at the time. Yeah, I was working hard too. Mm -hmm. Then I, when the war was over, they, they offered me a, a big increase in wages when the war was began, let me go. And it turned out to be a $2 raise. Well, I went in and told the boss, I laid it down on the table, and I said, I can go out and make it, pick up pasteboard boxes and make more than this. He said, well, why don't you try something? He said, if you need some money, I'll let you have it. And he was president of 
first stock here at the National Bank. He said, I'll let you have what you need to buy it. All you have to do is to give me an insurance policy. That's where I got my start. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice guy. Yep, he was a good guy. Mm -hmm. Then we lived in Winfield. Well, the kids all went through college and left. I stayed there and run the business. And when did you give it up? In 1960, what was it? 61? I was 61 years old, I guess. I turned it over to the boy that worked for me, and he's still running. So you've been retired close to 40 years? Yeah. What did you do after you retired? Played golf and do hunting. <laughs> I repaired golf clubs. And if I Kept busy? Oh, yeah. Then your daughter said you traveled? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did a lot of traveling. Have a favorite place? No, just as long as it wasn't a big city. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked big cities. Travel with a mobile home or just no. hotel rooms? My, my wife said she didn't want a mobile home. She said, if you take a vacation, I want to take one. If we take a mobile home, I got to cook and wash and do everything anyway. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> so we made three trips, I think, was Hawaii and one trip to Canada. And we, I've been in every state in the Union. I've always wanted to go to Australia, but I never did make it. It reminded me of that picture show. I'm just on my way to Australia, just passing through. You see that? Mm -hmm. Pretty good one. <laughs> well, did you get overseas for something? Went through the Panama Canal, though. Well, that counts. After my wife passed away, uh, my sister-in-law out in California had her knee replaced. I went out and stayed with her while she recuperated. Then we got a chance, a couple of us was going on this trip through the Panama, and then all at once they couldn't go, so I bought their tickets for their discount. Went through the Panama and up the East Coast. That's a pretty long trip. What kind of car would you travel around in? Tornado. 41 Tornado. Ford? A uh, Tornado. I know, but is it a... Uh, so Ford make them? No, Chrysler did. Uh, Chrysler. But a Chrysler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know my cars then. Well, they don't make them anymore. It was a straight eight. The hood, oh, that was oh, that long. Uh -huh. Big old long car, but it was a running car. Was that the first car you ever owned? Oh no. First car I ever owned was a 1994 coupe. Windows didn't roll up, you pulled the strap up and hooked it over. <laughs> Early air conditioning then, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a 1919 Ford coupe. Mm -hmm. So it was used. Huh? It was used. Yes, I gave $20 for it. <laughs> Quite a steal. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you still had it, I bet. Yeah, I'd like to have it now. Mm. Mm. You ever see the tires on them? No. They're about that big around. Bicycle tires now, 20, 33 and a third inches wide, and a three and a third wide. And 33 inches around. Little bitty tire. Well, would they blow up, get holes in them a lot? Being that small? They had tubes in them. Hmm. Oh, they was pretty good tires. The only trouble I had with it was when we went to Mexico, run the old cactus and it poke over to them. Everybody down there took corn and put in their tires instead of inner tubes, then drive it down in the Pond, let the corn soak up, and that way they can go anywhere and get a flat tire. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> and it worked? Oh, sure it worked. Hmm. Well, the 
roads weren't too good at that point either, I wouldn't think. You just had trails. You didn't have roads. Well, you had a few county roads, but most people from getting off the main road, they'd go on just two lane highway, just two tracks. Dirt? Dirt tracks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or where were these cactuses in the middle of the road, or do you? Oh yeah, they get out in the road. They grow everywhere. Of course, a lot of times you had to drive off the road to get to your house. <laughs> well, from you got closer to Oklahoma when you came to Win Winfield. How did you end up in Oklahoma? My daughter was all lived here. I moved in with Pam when my wife passed away. And when when was that? Rough, roughly. Well, let's see. She was. Uh, when did Mom die? You know, I knew you was going to ask me that. Was it ninety-two? Three. Ninety-three. Yeah, that's when Max Gr uh, retired. Retired. Yeah. yeah. So you've been in Oklahoma a little over twenty years. Yeah. Where do you well, you didn't move directly here then. Hmm? You didn't move directly here at that time. You stayed there in Winfield for a while. Yeah. And then... Well, I've been in this place. You came here in 2002. Yeah. I've been here eight years and I was over at the other place four years. I spent a year or two just wandering around. Wandering around <laughs> between daughters. <laughs> A wanderer. <laughs> well, where do you consider home? We're, we're right here. Do you? Uh, not New Mexico or Kansas. No. no, just wherever you are at the moment. That's home. Mm -hmm. Well, did you ever think you would make it to a hundred? Nope. I've always thought I'd be shot when I was ninety by a gentle husband. <laughs> <laughs> And why is that? <laughs> well, I just thought of that as a joke. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. <laughs> Did anyone else in your family make it to 100? No. You're the first? My mother was 86. My dad was in his 70s. My kid brother had drowned when he was in his 40s. My oldest brother had a heart attack when he was in his 60s. And Aunt Pauline was 95. Yeah. Well, she got close if she yeah. was 95. Yep. Yeah. Have any idea of why? What your secret is? No. What my secret is? Uh -huh, to making it to 100. A good wife was first. Good cigar and good scotch whiskey <laughs> and a good fat bunch of girls. They have three nice daughters. But they boss me around now. <laughs> Only when you let them. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice fat man. And at my birthday here, how many was here for that birthday party? About 120 people. Wow. And it was kids, nieces, and nephews from both coasts and then all in between. We had just 50, we had 48 immediate families as girls, our families. And then uh, we probably had about uh, 30 cousins yeah. that showed up from all over the some country. California, New York, Washington, New York, Buffalo. Had a big day. A big mm -hmm. day. Of course, they'd all lived at our Minnesota. house one time. Yeah. My wife was the oldest of the family of five. They had an open door policy. Yep. Well, they did. So if they couldn't come to our house, she would go to theirs and help take care of them. Well, was she a good cook? Yes, she was. She was a beautiful woman and a good woman. There's my parents there. Well, what would she cook that was your favorite? What was yours? Veal birdies? Veal birdies. I, I don't know what that is. 
Bell birdies is you take a piece of round steak and you pound it out and it's about that big and you put sausage in them and roll them up and you brown them and then you cook them in gravy and you serve them over noodles. You're supposed to use veal, but veal was always too expensive so you use round steak. And then beat it up real good. Uh -huh. Had you heard of that? I've never put the so oh, they're real flavorful. How had she learned? Was that so a, a dish that was passed down from her family? Did Grandma cook them? Grandma yeah. Nichols? Where did Mama learn that? I don't know. I don't either. I don't know whether she got it from somewhere there in Winfield or not. She's cooked them for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we went there. All of us girls cook them now. I just wonder if it's German or no. or, no, what, I or what. I don't think so. I don't know where she got it. Hmm. One of her sisters fixed it. I don't know. Well, what was something your mother fixed that you liked the best? I don't know. That's a long time ago. Homemade before. rolls. Yeah, she had made really good homemade rolls. <laughs> fried chicken? Yeah. We raised chicken, so she fried a lot of chicken. We ate chicken three times a day, seven days a week. Daddy <laughs> won't eat chicken now. <laughs> you don't like chicken? Mm -hmm. No way. What about yeah. eggs? Oh, I like eggs. Okay. <laughs> she typically fried the chicken or baked it? You got it every way. Every way. According to whether it's young chicken or an old chicken. <laughs> if it's a young chicken, she fried it. If it's an old chicken, she baked it. And are you serious? You had it for breakfast sometimes? No, I just kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> but you had eggs, which is kind of a chicken. Well, <laughs> you know, we ate mostly cereal for breakfast. Hmm. Like post-toasters and shredded wheat. Oatmeal. I still eat just oatmeal for breakfast. And what do you call the the noon meal? Lunch or dinner? Lunch. Lunch. And then the and then the dinner is the evening. Evening meal. We used to call it breakfast, dinner, and supper. When you were growing up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I still say supper. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> well, it sounds like a sense of humor has been a part of your life too. What? A sense of humor. Oh yeah. No use getting mad. Somebody would like to break your nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you play practical jokes? No, not especially. No. Just tried to keep the mood light. The mood light. I like to play golf. I spend all my extra time playing golf. Have a favorite course? What? A favorite course? No. Just there at Winfield, we had a nice course. I liked it. Watch the Masters every year? Oh, yeah. I hey. don't watch them now because I don't know any of them. Well, one's an Oklahoma boy. Well, Ricky I, Fowler. Yeah, but I still remember him. I don't follow them enough. Ever visit Augusta? No. Well, that's on a lot of golfers' wish lists to yeah. get to go to Augusta. You played Pebble Beach once, didn't you? No, I didn't. You never did no. get to? Jay and, Jay and Max did. Max I don't know. You probably had too. <clears throat> I've driven by it. I haven't I been on it. played in Hawaii. I have quite a few courses over there. We spent two weeks over there visiting my oldest daughter and her husband. He was in the Navy. And uh, the guy next door to us, them, he was a teacher in the Houston University. And he came over one day and said, I see you've got some golf clubs. He said, do you play? And I said, yeah. He said, would you like to join us in a game? He said, we need a foursome. I said, sure. The president of the university was one of them. I've met some high-class boys. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. You ever been to Hawaii? 
I have not, no. Oh, I say this something. They lived at the end of a street where it went off over above. And every morning, those Japanese or ladies would get out and sweep off their sidewalk and half of the street. Well, halfway in the street and halfway, and back to the curb every morning. Hmm. There's something to see. And those guys come by tra to trim the bushes in the front yard. They had one of those big old machetes about that long. They just go all around and swing it. It was something to see. Hmm. And that's about my life. I guess it's been a good life. It's been a good one. I have not been too sick. I've had a pacemaker. I got my third pacemaker. The first one was guaranteed for 10 years. In seven years, I had to put a new one in. I said, well, I don't pay for this. And this one was guaranteed. The doctor just laughed. They went from 28000 for the first one I got to 30 some thousand for this one. Wow. That's your major health issue? Is your pacemaker? Yeah. My, I was passing out. I'd just be sitting here talking to you and all I wanted to go out. Hmm. My heart would stop. Uh, Do you have to take any medicine? <laughs> <laughs> They've cut a lot of my medicine out here in the last year. I was taking the same like pills every time I turn around. Mm. I still take quite a few, but not too many from Yeah, my... we've really cut it back. And I think you've done better since we've taken him off a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The... Every time you go to the doctor, he wants to give you another pill, but he doesn't want to take you off any. Mm. And some of them pills get a little expensive. They do. We had some we were buying in Canada. Here they was four dollars and forty cents a piece. Up there there's about half that price. Wow. Mm. Well and they interact and they don't seem to check that before they give you more either. Mm -hmm. I've got a girl here that Pam uh, we call her Pam the doctor, she's a nurse that comes in here. Yeah. And she's the one that cut me off with a lot of pills. Well, how early in the morning do you get up these days? About 5.30. <laughs> they, they, they get me up. I don't get up. They come in to give me a bath or to rest me in. Then about 7.30 at night, from 7.30 to 7.45, they come in and help me get into bed. I can't get up and do it myself. And then what do you do between? Sit right here. Sit right there. Where I eat. Eat, sleep, that's about all you do here. Oh, don't forget your exercising. <laughs> <laughs> exercising, what kind of, what do you do for exercise? She walks me up down the hall here and down here and get her on the rolling machine. And... Gives you a pretty good workout. Yeah. Well, he has a wallet routine that he does. <laughs> and would you do it if she wasn't here to make you? I can't get up and stay, go up. Somebody has to follow me in my wheelchair. Do they? In case I go down. Why well, do you watch television or read or what? Oh yeah, I watch television. I used to read a lot. Girls would give me four, six, seven books a week. But my eyes got to where I can't. Then I, I can't follow the book very good anymore. What kind did you like when you Western. could? Western. <laughs> Western. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Louis L'Amour? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think I read every book he made. Probably six times. <laughs> I got a had a sister-in-law that she had every book he made. She had a big bookcase full of books. Well, he had a lot. Yeah. I don't know how many, but he had a lot. There were three shelves in the bookcase, and it was full. Hmm. So you're a big John Wayne fan on TV? Well, I used to be. I can just about repeat the words they were supposed to say in all the movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you keep up with the news, current events? On the TV. TV. Yeah. I have get up in the morning here. It's about, 
oh, 6, 15, when I get in there in my chair, I turn the news on in the morning, listen to the news until 7.30. Mm -hmm. When did you give up driving? When I moved here. So in your 90s? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. I had no trouble giving it up. Mm -hmm. You chose to. Yeah. I didn't want to kill somebody. I, I got to you know, at 90 years old, your reactions are not very fast. Mm -hmm. I'm still driving. About 93 when you give it up. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I just told my daughter to take it out to their place and sell it. So, do, you have, do you have any hunting or fishing stories you remember? Well, there were so many of them. I can tell you one. We went over here when they was putting a lake in. What was that river over there? Canadian? They was putting a waterway in. And one of the boys we knew was uh, f foreman of uh, the deal, and he invited us to come down and go quail hunting. They was going to flood all that land in there. But we got down there, and well, I think we shot 147 birds that day. Wow. Three of us. Oh, my gosh. We ran out of shells. But they couldn't, the birds were going to drown, so it didn't make any difference. Of course, they wouldn't fly past dry land. But that, I guess that was the biggest hunting game I ever had. Did you dress all those? Huh? Sure we dressed them. That, that was big quail fry or something. <laughs> oh, we split them up amongst a lot of people. Wow. It's a lot of birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of birds. But we didn't walk very far, though. <laughs> too much water. And my dog there, I had her down there, and she wouldn't get out in the water to get a dead bird. She'd go out and get, just get to and get her feet fast, and then she'd back <laughs> off. She didn't like water. But my son-in-law had a barely, she'd just run and jump in. <laughs> That's where you invest in a Labrador. No. <laughs> or, or a water dog, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Did you ever hunt over an Irish setter? No. I did one time, and I thought that was the funniest thing I ever saw. Instead of standing on point, and they sat down on point. <laughs> just go over the fence before the quail is, and just sit down there and sit there and look at them. I thought, what's that dog doing? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why they're called Irish setters? I don't know. Yeah, there's Irish setter and Swingers setter, all kinds of. But they go and sit. Is that why they're called yeah, that? The setters. Hmm. They're English bred, though. So you fished too? Oh yeah, yeah. Karen Max has got a lake house over here. Leo Lake we follow. I used to go down there every weekend and had free. Did you noodle? No. I, know, I tried that one time over in Kansas. And if I hadn't caught my spinners on my overalls, I'd have been dead up. I got one too big. He got a hold of my hand wouldn't turn loose. Mm. That was enough for me. I got out of the bank right then and didn't kneel back no more. <laughs> I really don't understand that, that sport. I don't either. I, mean, I don't see what's in the fun. You don't have a turtle in there or a snake or anything. Mm -hmm. And I never did like that. And are those, those alligator gars or something yeah. I've seen pictures of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but alligator gar can't do much to you. Their, their snouts are too long and too thin. Mm -hmm. They look like they could. Yeah. <laughs> We fished for them up in Wichita, on down on the Little Arkansas River, and just shoot them and throw them up on the bank. Mm. They're no good for anything. Mm. Well, that was more for sport. Yeah. They did a lot of fishing in Little Rock, Arkansas. My wife's oldest sister lived down there with her husband. We'd go down there and go crack a fish. 
They had a lot of good crappy fishing down there. But people like crappies. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're about as good eating as there is. Mm. Went to Hawaii one time, and uh, my oldest daughter and her husband was just stationed up there. And he said, I don't bring any fishing equipment. I thought, well, no, that's crazy, but I got up there and he took me and introduced me to Commander. And I bet you he had 20 fishing poles lined up. People brought and gave to him. He said, just take your pick and pick out what you want. I said, well, I don't want anything about him. So he picked me out some. Then I go up to the lake there and fish, catch those humpback salmon. And when you catch them, you snag them. You know, they don't bite. You just snag them. If you happen to snag them on a, a fin on top, you had a lot of fun because they could just take you all over that lake. <laughs> <laughs> Did that happen to you? Yep. <laughs> I was throwing them back as I caught them because they're not too good to eat. But this Indian boy over there had no pickup truck and he's putting all in that. He said, You know, warn them? I said, No. He said, I take them. Then he got to tell me that he was taking them up to a children's home. That's where they had the fish to eat. Was, he was taking them fish to eat. They couldn't, they couldn't buy it. Beef up there was, hamburgers was five dollars a piece. That was years ago when hamburgers down here was 25 cents. Hmm. They don't have cat, too many cattle hmm. in Hawaii. Did you go deep sea this fishing? Is, this was up in Kodiak, Alaska. Alaska. Okay. I said it was Kodiak. Okay. Did you go deep sea fishing? Nope. Went, you did went, with Billy and Doug. Went down, went down to Houston, went out there on deep sea fishing. Got blisters on my legs, sitting in the shade fishing. This was about an inch high, just all over my legs here. Oh God, that was miserable. From sitting in the shade? Sitting in the shade, reflection of water. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You didn't think about that, though. I never thought about it at all before I stood up. I don't feel bad then. <laughs> <laughs> Until you stood up. Yep. Mm. Well, we caught the kingfish that down there. And got into them real good. We had a fish de uh, de trunk, big deal to put the fish in. And we had that full when we went in that night. Hmm. You see. was in a cabin cruiser, weren't you? Or what kind of a boat were you in? That was a fishing boat. A big one? Yeah. It was a big cruiser. You had a good fish one. fry. Hmm? You had a good fish fry that night. Well, no. No? Nope. They gave them all away. They get into the conservation army and the children's home and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because they've got usually got a locker full of fish at home anyway. Very seldom you ever take any home. They just didn't go to waste that day. Hmm? They didn't go to waste that day. No, oh. no, no. You take the Salvation Army serves them, the children's home, they like them. Mm -hmm. And there's usually somebody at the dock that you know that goes. goes delivers them for you. They just take the whole bunch. Mm. Mm. We went rabbit hunting in Wichita one time. There was five of us, cousins and everything. We had a trailer load, just a two-wheel trailer load of rabbits when we come in. Now what do you do with a trailer load of rabbits? Big old jackrabbit. I don't know. What did you do? We took them down to Salvation Army and they were just tickled to death to get them. Hmm. <laughs> What'd they do with them? They dress them and feed them as people come in hungry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They have a big kitchen up there. That they prepare three meals a day. Never had rabbit. Make rabbit soup? Or stew, rabbit stew? Rabbit, fried rabbits. Fried. Get your cotton tails. They're a good fry. Jackrabbits are too tough. 
I don't think there's very many jackrabbits left. Oh, there's more than you say. Are there? Yeah. Hmm. When we went on a trip to New Mexico, what was it, your 90th birthday? We went out to the cemetery to look at them, and there were jackrabbits out there. I think that was the yeah. first time I ever saw jackrabbits. They're thick in New Mexico. Hmm. We used to hunt them down there. We'd take these red snow fences and make a big circle. and. and Wide them out at one end, and everybody string out way out, drive the rabbits into there, then get in there and shoot them all, and feed them the hogs. And the hogs ate them. Oh yeah, yeah. hogs will eat anything. Yeah. Chickens, guineas, turkeys, whatever they can get a hold of. So your parents raised hogs? Well, we raised just one hog. Oh. They'd get a pig and they'd raise it to butcher. No, Dad did raise mostly mules. Mules? Mm -hmm. Small mules, what they call cotton mules. We were about six, seven hundred pounds. And he'd sell them to? Buyers would come through and buy them. For Farming or for other yeah, things? Yeah, for takes the cotton country to help in the cotton fields. They didn't want them big reserve mules. Reserve mule is a big animal. It'll weigh 12, 1,400 pounds, tall. And they, they use them in Missouri to plow with. But cotton mules are used to pull uh, cotton? To pull. Cotton wagons? Uh, just to cultivate them. They were cheap and easy. Then it got to where mules were down there at, what's that racetrack, Rio, what? Anyway, the racetrack down there in New Mexico. Oh, um. Rio Grande? No. no, what is it called? But anyway, it got to where the mules was, the ideal thing was to get by a team of bay mules. I like hard mules, and I hitch them to a buggy and go to the fair. That was a big deal. With them. Those mules they were colored like that, light colored. They brought a hell of a price. Hmm. Who knew? When he, he did the mules in New Mexico, when he went to Winfield and, and Wichita, he didn't? No, they sold them all. Sold them all. I think most of them was killed in a hailstorm. Hmm. Had a big old hailstorm. Riadosa Downs. Yeah, Riadosa. Mm -hmm. Was there any anything on your bucket list? Anything you wish you could do that you've never done before? Go to Australia. There you go. There we go. <laughs> First time I've heard that. What's in Australia you want to see? I want to see the back lab. That bush country down there. And a kangaroo. I don't care about the big town. Pictures look pretty. Hmm? The pictures look pretty. Yeah. yeah. Australia. Why not? Hmm. Why not? <laughs> now I notice you have a, a, a pack of Levi Garrett there. Do you chew? What? A pack what? of tobacco, chewing tobacco? Yeah. Are you a chewer? Yep. When did you start that? I was about 14. <laughs> Snuff hand. Hmm. Used to take my, my grandmother and grandfather both chewed stuff. And I'd swipe a little bit. The boys down there did it, so I had to try it when I did it. Better. <laughs> but I've chewed cigars most of the time. Do you have a favorite cigar? El Rosso. They're full filters. There's no sweepings in it. You don't smoke them, you chew them? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, snuff you put up in your... Up, oh, down there. Uh -huh. 
Now, when you have a cigar, you have to have a fine bottle of scotch. What's your favorite scotch? Johnny Walker Red Label. Johnny Walker Red Label. <laughs> he said that too quick. <laughs> <laughs> I bought enough of it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you bought enough? <laughs> I don't know. Hello, Carol. Hey there. I guess we should back up and say what were your girls' names? You said Pam? And Carol. Car Carol. And Kay was here, so she's in Kansas City. Kay. Pam, Kay, and Carol. Pam was Sue. Barbara Carol. She was Kay. There you go. And the dog was? Babe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what was it like being the only man in the house? I was boss. As long as they were gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't bad. I had no problems with my family. We got a good family. Well, when you did have to discipline them, who would do it? You or your wife? My wife. I wasn't home long enough. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't too much of that. She had a back of a chair, the, you know, a uh, chair, the kitchen chair, or the back like that on it. She called it the Board of Education. That's when you could paddle your kids. <laughs> and I don't remember her paddling much or hard or anything. No, we did. Uh, I remember her using a ping pong paddle once. We, um, <laughs> I still have the paddle. <laughs> Mama's paddle? Uh huh. It just laid up on the refrigerator like a threat. Uh-huh. <laughs> we were grounded. That was the main punishment we got when we were growing up. And that hurt. Well, what, was church an important part of, of growing up? Not for me. Because I had to work. But the family, they went to church. Well, when you were in, in your youth, what was what, for your parents, did they take you to church? Your mom and dad? I don't remember. Didn't we live in Mexico. There wasn't any the church there. They had church at somebody's house. Mm -hmm. Got up there in Wichita, and I don't remember going to church. I once went to Asbury Church, I guess, when I was a kid. I'd start out riding in the car with Mom in a long T4. Time to time get to church, I'd, get, I'd be walking for a half a mile. She'd stop and pick up all the people along the road. Let me walk because I was a young kid. <laughs> and what kind of church was it? Methodist. Methodist. Hmm. Now, now, you said in your career you, you supplied jukeboxes and machines, and, and you didn't like to dance, but you liked music. Yeah. What was your favorite type of music? Western. Western. Yep. Uh, who was your favorite artist? Uh, Eddie Arnold. Eddie Arnold. Not Bob Wells and the Texas Playboys? Well, they didn't. They was all right, but Eddie Arnold was the same. <laughs> well, I assume in the 50s with jukeboxes, it all turned to rock and roll. Oh, my Yep. Do you remember those days? Screaming, yelling, yeah, that's all they did. They didn't say <laughs> Or Elvis was during that time too. Yeah. yeah. And they became uh, jukeboxes became kind of popular then. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I bought uh, one time I bought ten jukeboxes at one time, and they gave me a piano. A piano. And piano. My wife had one in the living room in her organ in the living room. So we put this one in the basement. Had a more use for it than a man in the room. <laughs> well, you could have had the dueling pianos, <laughs> a daughter on each one. Yeah. Uh, those are hard to move, too. What? Pianos. They're heavy. Well, this was a small one. Small? Yeah. We had to be one upstairs. Yeah. 
Well, no, my wife had such trouble playing an art and writers in her hands so bad that she couldn't, that horse she couldn't play at all. That's when you get a player one, a player piano. Oh. <laughs> My mother-in-law had a player piano. I used to go up there, and she had twins. There were twins, or the little ones. And they was about two years old. I'd get one on each knee and sit there and play the piano. Well, where you were living, did you experience the Dust Bowl? Yes, ma'am. Hang sheets up over the windows, even the windows closed. And out in western Kansas, the dust bowl would blow up over the house and be clear up on one side, just clear up the eaves. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Well, how would you get to the block to the barn to get your to take care of the animals? They didn't have any cattle. They didn't have cattle. In western Kansas, only in the grassland of eastern Colorado. Okay. Western Kansas is all farmland. What about the chickens? I don't know. Well, I wasn't out there. <laughs> My uncle had 10,000 acres out of Syracuse and he tried to get me to take it and farm it. He said, you can have half of what you make. Well, what am I going to live on? He said, you'll get a crop once every seven years. I said, what if we were live on that six years waiting for that seventh year crop? He said, that's your problem. <laughs> He's quite an old man. He had gold teeth. He had a plantation down in Cuba. And he was down there one time with gold. He could get gold pretty cheap. And he just had him a set of dentures made out of gold. <laughs> I've often wondered who got those when he died. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> they may have gone with him. Yeah. Probably not, though, but... No, I doubt it. They strip everything off of you for you. <laughs> well, when history is written, what would you like it to say about you? How do you want to be remembered? This is a plain old country woman. I don't know if you're about any fussy. <laughs> they had this birthday party for me. That was just an outlandish some money they spent on that. They fit it every all our nation is forty some odd of breakfast before they left Sunday morning. You only turn one hundred once. Yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> but I like your T shirt though. Yeah. Well, you, you told Alex earlier that you would change something if you could. What what would you change? I don't know. Well, my, I changed my wife's dying. I'd give 10 years off my life to give her 10 years. But she had cancer, bad cancer. She just was helpless two years. Just hit her. Burned up with radiation. Mm. It's a hard way to go. Oh man, I tell you, she suffered. Mm. She was a wonderful woman. What would you do for dates? Hmm? Where would you take her on a date? Oh, we'd go to the picture show and go canoeing. And canoeing? Yeah, we had a canoe up there. Hmm. Went on the Little Arkansas River and go. Hurry. My wife's sister just younger than her. I had a good friend, they had a date, and we'd four of us take the canoe, paddle up the river and back. All four knew how to swim? Yeah. I could paddle like a duck, or swim like a dog, I don't know what you'd call it. The rest of them are good swimmers. You could save yourself if you had to. Yeah, yeah I went to uh, K-12 
Canada one time with the Boy Scout troop. Why did he pay his taxes? And they took you out in the lake when you first got up there and you were seeing how you could paddle and stuff like that. And all at once they just turned the boat over. They wanted to see whether we could swim or not. That's when I wore swimming vest from there on out. They said, you can't, you can't do that. Hmm. So you were in scouts? Yeah. Did you make eagle? No, but I've got a grandson who's made eagle scouts, and then they're right behind him, his brother. He's going to make eagle scouts. No, I was scout uh, assistant, scout master. We went to Canada as, as a troop. Took a tour of the islands up there. I didn't know Kendall had swamp land in it. Well, with three girls, you wouldn't be involved with. Well, I was involved in Girl Scouts too. Girl Scouts, okay. Yeah. So sold a lot of or helped sell a lot of Girl Scout cookies. No, I didn't have a Girl Scout cookie back then. Back then. Did you help them with their camps? Yep. Took them out to had a teacher there. That they lived on a farm. They had a lot of water now. So she said, bring the troop out. You know, they didn't have all the water now they want. Because we're going to turn the hose in on tomorrow. So we took them out there. And while I was out there, one of the cows had a calf. She was good to watch it. And they thought that was the craziest thing. But I sure got chewed out about that from some of their mothers. <laughs> but you know, the kids taught them something. It sure did. It wasn't hurting them anything. That was nature. Mm -hmm. But they would love to go out there and break those watermelons just eat the heart out of them. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. yeah. No seeds. <laughs> and sweeter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They paid the price for later, though. <laughs> Upset stomach, maybe. <laughs> Was that, was that up in Kansas? Yeah, in Winfield. Winfield. That was... Yeah, my girls grew up there in Winfield. That's where the Friends, Friends University is there? No, that's in Wichita. Southwest okay. University. And there used to be another college there. I forget what it was. It was some other church college, but they pulled out. Well, the inner urban, I haven't heard too much about that, too. Did you write it any other time? No. Nope. Just that once? It just goes between Atchison and Wichita. It goes down, comes back, goes up. It's, Atchison's a big railroad deal. Okay. I've heard people talk about a doodle bug. Is that the same thing? What? Doodle bug. Doodle bug. Doodle, doodle, doodle bug. So a train kind of like that. So it That's it. kind of like a hand car. Oh, it's small when you pump it. Oh, okay. Hmm. You have to do the work. Oh, some of them. Some of them are going to more. Okay. They got a place out here in New Mexico. That there's a town up above the bluff. And the doodle bug runs down on narrow gauge railroad. It's only about that wide. It runs clear down the town down below. Mm -hmm. Then they have to pull it back up. Hmm. Is there anything you want to ask him while we've got it rolling? Put him on the hot seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you tell him about your trip to Canada with the Boy Scouts? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Did you tell him how you met Mom and then how, how long you've been going together? You walked her to school the first day? When, would, when did you know you wanted to marry her? When I was in sixth grade. <laughs> what was that deciding factor? Yeah. Well, just we were going to school together. They raised each other. Were you in the same grade? Oh, yeah. The same grade? Same age. Mother was six months older. She was the boss for the first half of the year, and Daddy was the boss the second half. That's how we determined who we went to. <laughs> that was what they always said.
they went together all through high school except for one year. One, one year, is that when she went to Northeast? She went to East High. East High. And I went to North. And you went to North. But that's the only time you all weren't together, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But you still didn't date anybody else. No. Neither did she. Uh-uh. How did you pop the question? I just called her. My mother, when I was working, staying at home, and my mother come in one morning or one evening and said, Ivan, she said, you're working now and making money. I'm going to start charging you $10 a month for rent. So I called her and I said, Mom's going to charge me $10 a month for rent. I said, how about us just getting married? <laughs> she said, okay. $10 a month. Yeah. Wouldn't go far today, would it? No, well, I was making twelve dollars and a half a week. A week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when her, one of her boys come up on Christmas, he was going to school down at Austin, working at uh, IBM. IBM. And uh, I had my payroll card there that for the year, six hundred and seven dollars I made. He said, Grandpa. I lost more than that just coming here to see you. I said, what do you mean? Well, they said, I get $20 an hour for Sundays and holidays, $20 an hour for overtime, and double time for holidays. Well, things also cost more now than they did oh, back. Yeah, 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 you buy a loaf of bread for a nickel. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first quit work and the door sent me to the store to get some loaf of bread. I come back and I said, you know a loaf of bread costs 15 cents? <laughs> we were just talking about the price of eggs and how eggs have gone up. Hmm. How much a dozen they are now. Compared you know, to when he was shopping and buying his own groceries, what, eight years ago? And you been here eight years? Yeah. And eight years ago you was over at the other place and doing your own grocery shopping. Yeah. And they were, what, 89 cents a dozen or something mm -hmm. like that? Not now. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, though, we used to raise a lot of chickens and mom would take a case of eggs in to town on Saturdays to sell them. And she could give each one of us a, an egg. And we could take it in the grocery store and trade that one egg for ice cream cone. <laughs> Pretty good deal. Yeah. But eggs was high then, 60, 65 cents a dozen. But you had to walk ginger, gingerly with that one egg. Oh, no. No? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stick it in your pocket and run? No. No? <laughs> well, you couldn't do that. Just hold it in your hand. An egg for an ice cream cone. What was your flavor? What flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. May have been all they had? Huh? Was that all they had? No, they had vanilla and chocolate and strawberry. Three choices. Mm. One scoop or two? Hmm? One scoop or one, two? One. One. It was a big scoop though. It was a pretty good size. Well, when she would, tra would she give you some money to go to the movies? We never went to the movies. Didn't. We had free movies at the park on Saturday night. Once in a while, we'd go to there, spread your quilt out, sit down and watch the movie. Mm -hmm. But they were silent. Black and white, of course. Yeah. And the, the cowboy or, or the screen down across, you'd have to read that to see what they were saying. Uh. No sound. Make up your own story sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> when, when did you get your first telephone? Who? You. When do you remember the first telephone? We had one there in New Mexico. Did you? Yeah. They run the wire along the fence post. Huh. And you come to the gate, they'd have a tall post there, and they'd run the wire up and over the road, getting down on the other side. And if a cow got out and went through the fence, broke the wire, then you didn't have a telephone. 
but they were all, everybody had the short, long short ring or short and long ring or two longs. There would be about seven people on one line. Mm -hmm. And boy, when one phone would ring and everybody would listen. <laughs> no secrets. No secrets. <laughs> huh. What about electricity? Do you remember getting it? And when we moved to Wichita, it was the first house that we ever seen electricity. And when we moved into it, had gas lights. Mm. Every time a bug would fly through the mantle, why it go out. Now the house you moved into, was it two-story, but you had to do a yeah. ladder on the outside? No, two-story, but you had a stairway inside. You did? We had a ladder on the front porch to go up and down the swing on the sack on go down slide down the road. Oh. <laughs> Entertainment. Well, on hot, hot days, how would you stay cool at night? Sleep outside on the porch? On the porch roof, we usually go out in the yard. On the roof? Yeah, it was a pretty flat roof. Mm -hmm. But Mama wasn't normal when we were sleeping out there. You have to get back in before she got up? No, before she come upstairs. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I remember one time they shot a buffalo right there in the front yard. They had a flood. It was 1921, and they washed the gates off for the buffalo over down south of town. This one big old bull had wandered up all through the town, clear out to our place, northeast of town. And uh, they sent some men out, tried to round him up from Stockyard on the horseback. They couldn't chase him down, so they just finally shot him. Mm. Did you see them do it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they come by and told us to get in the house and stay in the house until they got to the buffalo. Mm. He was going to just go right through a fence. Pretty big. Yeah. Mm. You remember a lot. Yeah, they got a lot of fond memories. Yeah. What did your mother make your clothes? I'm sure she had a sack she bought chicken feed in. She made your shirts out of? Yeah. Mm. They, were, they come out and they were selling shirts with designs in them for, in the chicken feed. Mm. That's where they sell them chicken feed. Mom made her shirt. We wore bib overalls. Bib overalls? You know what they are? I do. And how often would you get a new pair of shoes? Once a year for Christmas. You had to make a do. If they got to be too small. We handed them down. Most of my shoes, I got to wear my older brother's shoes. So you hoped he took care of them? If he didn't, I got a new pair. Oh. Yeah, we did. We were pretty poor, but we never went hungry or without clothes. Well, most other people were in the same boat. Oh yeah, everybody was. Mm -hmm. How would she do laundry? She had a washing machine. Did her own tub and scrub board for a long time. And then bought her a washing machine. Well, didn't she have tub, ring her out on a tub out in the yard? I can remember that. Well, that's where she... Mm -hmm. She had that in the house, too. Okay. That was where he dried them. Okay. Take them out of the washing machine, put them in, ring them through. Through the ringer. Ring them through that and on the board. And then hang them out on a line. Yeah. And then good old Maytag came along. Yep. Yeah. I think that was the second Worst machine my mother got was a Maytag. Hmm. Well, over the course of your life, what do you think has been the, the best invention, greatest invention? Just you know, electronics. Electronics. That covers a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Television, radio. Yeah. Cell phones. No, we had telephones. 
which is the old cranking time. Short, too long. Well, did you did you learn how to use a computer? I never have yet. <laughs> how about a cell phone these days? No. No. You used a tablet just a tiny little bit for reading. Yeah. Grandkids got him one of those. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she was tired. Yeah. First year. First of the month. Yeah, December 1st. It'll be 2016 before we know it. Yeah. And then we'll be planning a 101 birthday party. Golly, we'll have to take you to Australia, Dad. <laughs> we'll have to take you to Australia. No, I couldn't do it. <laughs> got too many pills I have to take. <laughs> hey, they can travel with you. <laughs> couldn't buy that many. Ship them ahead. Oh. <laughs> Not buy them over there. Where there's you know, a will, there's a way. Went through the Panama Canal, and this boat was from Australia. And they had peanut butter in regular George just like it is here, but it was made in Australia. I thought that was odd. No milk on board. It was a good trip. Been a pretty good life? Been a good life. Well, I think we'll say thank you for sharing your stories with us well, and close out. Thank you. Hope you got some good out of it.